Hello, my name is Louise Savage. Welcome to my channel. If you've not joined me before, welcome back if you have. Um, I'm really happy today. It's been, it feels like ages since I've sat and waffled on about books. Um, and I've got four real treats today. Um, I've deliberately picked, I have read more books than this in, in August, if I'm honest. Um, but I'm actually going to talk about those um, at another date. Um, because I've picked four books that um, really sort of took me by surprise and um, all four of them I absolutely loved for very, very different reasons. Um, so it's going to be a very positive um, waffle today. Um, so first up is this one. Now this this is Before My Actual Heart Breaks by Tish Delaney. Um, and I have to be absolutely honest with you, this has been on my bookshelves for a very long time and I keep looking at it and going, mm. I think if I was honest, the cover put me off and the title put me off. Um, it seemed just sort of brash and obvious. I, I, you know, I don't know why. Oh my God, I am so glad that I started to read this book. I started to read it thinking that it would probably go straight to the charity shop, which sounds awful. But... Um, I started reading it and I couldn't put it down. So it tells the story of Mary, who is um, sort of, I don't know, I just imagine she's probably about my age um, and she's reflecting. Her, her husband has gone um, and she's reflecting back over her life and her relationships and her experiences. Um, she's uh, Northern Irish. She lives near Omar uh, in Northern Ireland in a in a small sort of rural community um, in an old farmhouse. And um, so the book kind of oozes uh, rural life, rural community. Um, but basically, when she was a young girl, she was very, very ambitious um, and was desperate to leave the area where she lived, wanted to kind of escape. She had a very sort of quirky uh, best friend called Lizzie who kind of sort of leads her astray, if you like. Um, and she's growing up in really sort of draconian circumstances. Her um, mother is really rather unpleasant um, and um, she, can, she can barely breathe, you know, she, can't, she can hardly move without being criticised and her father's very, very weak. Um, and she goes to this uh really sort of um strict um school and uh anyway to cut a cut a story short <laughs> she gets pregnant and it's the and and you know you you could think on the surface of it that's a very hackneyed cliched story except this really really isn't um because of the choices that she makes and the relationship she forms after that event um and I, I am still walking around the rooms of her house. I still have lots of these characters in my head. That's something you'll hear me say very often of a book that I've really enjoyed. Um, I didn't want to finish it. It was one of those. I, I just, I just loved being with these people. Um, so the character portrayal, the setting, um, the themes as well of the story. You know, the whole idea about loyalty um, and what love is and um it's a it's deeply romantic as well this novel in the best sense um and it's a lot of it is about how we we struggle to really know ourselves and we struggle to know what makes us tick and what's right for us um and hopefully most of us arrive at some point in our lives where we get that but not everybody does um so some of the tension in the novel is around whether she's going to kind of realize um what she really needs or not um it's funny as well you know there's real real moments of humor real moments of tragedy as you can tell i absolutely loved it next up very very different uh reading experience so this is called the mad women's ball by victoria mass and um it's it it was written in french it's been translated and i know it was women's translation month i can't remember i think that was august um, so I suppose in a way this is my one of my tributes to that. Um, and uh, it's a histor it's historical fiction and I was fascinated with this because I think it's based on um, 
truth in the sense that I think places like this institution, in fact, this institution may well have existed um, in Victorian Paris. Is that a, I don't know whether that actually makes sense, but anyway, it's, it's, it's set in the Victorian era in Paris. And um, there's this institution called the Salt Petrier, which is a kind of neurological centre for women specifically. And within this place, the women all live there and um, they're all there for, for, for numerous reasons. So you've got, you know, you've got prostitutes in there. You've got um, young women from very, very privileged, in inverted commas, backgrounds. Um, you know, young women, old women. Some of the women have been in there for donkey's years. And basically, all of these women are kind of socially inconvenient. So um, there's one young girl who um, is getting a little bit too uh, masculine in her way. She's doing things that, that women aren't expected to do, that men can get away with, but women can't. And therefore, her father packs her off um, to the Saltpetria. Um, and once a year, there's an annual, would be if it's once a year, there's a there's a ball at the Salpetria and all the women get very excited at this opportunity to kind of dress up um, and in their heads it presents perhaps the opportunity to escape if somebody takes a, a shine to them. Um, so the women all get very excited about this ball and um, Parisian society flocks to watch the ball it's really voyeuristic you know they, they kind of enjoy watching all these women who are allegedly mad many of them most of them are not um uh, parading around at the ball so the setting and the concept um and that sense of imprisonment and frustration um and injustice is a really strong thread through this novel and um two very, very unlikely allies come together. Some of the women will go to really, really desperate lengths to try and get out of this place. Um, I don't think I'm going to say any more because I don't want to give anything away. But yeah, absolutely fascinating book. Really, really loved it. What a fantastic cover as well. You can see it glistening uh, on the screen. Yeah. Next up, you'll have seen this in a lot of bookshops, I'm sure. The Last House on Needless Street. It's been a, a bit of a bestseller, I think, by Catriona Ward. And um, I was bought this uh, as a present by a lovely colleague at work. Thanks, Charlie. Um, and, um, and she said, oh, you know, I really want to know what you think of this. And I thought, oh, what does that mean? Um, but my goodness, it's, it's a thriller. It's a, a psychological thriller. I couldn't put it down. It's it's really addictive reading because, um, again, on the surface of it, it sounds quite a hackneyed subject, but my goodness, the way it, it, it pans out, it isn't. There's lots of surprises and lots of really good twists. Um, so The Last House in Needless Street is occupied by a very odd, peculiar man. And there's somebody else in the house with him as well. Um, he's a socially inept, he doesn't sort of fit in in the local community and um, a woman moves in to the house next door basically to spy on him because she's deeply suspicious of him because when she was a young girl her sister disappeared um, on they, they were having a family day at the beach her parents her and her, her little sister and her sister disappeared and has never been seen since we know that there's something buried in the woods but we don't know what it is um, nothing in this novel is as, t as it seems at all. So you might think you've worked it out already. Trust me, you absolutely <laughs> have not. So if you want to be on the edge of your seat and you want to sort of have your mind messed around with, and you know, it's really, really well written as well. It's really brisk, um, fresh prose. Um, yeah, absolutely adored it. And you are on this kind of uh, detective journey, if you like alongside the sister who's trying to find her sister. Um, so yeah, I, I adored this, really highly recommended. And finally, and there's a bit of an apology here. So this is um, a novel called The Paper Palace by Miranda Cowley Heller. I think that's right, yes. Um, and I read this, some of it, during the um, long list for the Women's Prize and I did, really enjoy it 
um, but I didn't manage to finish it. So I sort of went back and I've reread it, the bits that I rushed. Um, and um, I'm so glad I did. I've got quite a few friends who've read this and enjoyed it as well. Um, because it's a fantastic family saga. It's set in Cape Cod. Again, it's a good thing to read over the summer if you like, because um, there's lots of swimming, there's lots of beach, there's lots of um, barbecue. It's that kind of a vibe, if you like. And the family have obviously been um, returning to this place over and over and over again over the years. Um, and what happens here is, and it's not a spoiler because it happens in the first few pages, um, Ellie, I think the protagonist is called, she um, sleeps with her friend of many, many, many years. Um, and the spin on it is that while she sleeps with her friend, I'm, and I'm being, she has sex with him, I don't, I don't think there's any sleeping involved. Um, her, her husband, his wife, their children, her mother are all in the house, you know, next door. They can hear them talking. Um, so there's this tremendous betrayal of trust and loyalty that happens at the beginning. And the structure of the book's really interesting because it takes place ostensibly over 24 hours. You're kind of count counting down the hours um, as you read it. But also it keeps spanning back over the last sort of 50 years or so. Um, so I found the whole just just the way the story was interwoven and threaded was was fantastic uh, the two men in her life her husband and peter and jonas the the guy the, the old friend that she has sex with at the beginning um are in themselves fascinating characters they're very different from each other and it's a story about love it's a story about maternal love it's a story about um sisterly love it's also a story about um, romantic and sexual love. Um, and again, you know, I just I just think it's I just thought it was wonderful. It just oozes um, realism, I suppose. So there you go. That's my four recommendations for August. Happy reading. And um, hopefully I'll be back next week with a few little treats. Take care. See you soon. Bye.